Okay, guys, welcome to the Chosen One podcast show. If you landed on this podcast episode, you are probably a manifesting generator and a female entrepreneur, coach, or expert. So welcome, take a cup of tea, and listen, binge listen to all the amazing episodes I have set up for you. Episodes to help you create the right energy and mindset to create the manifesting generator business and life of your dreams. Here we go. Okay, guys, I'm so freaking excited to share this episode with you. It's actually an episode I recorded back in 2019. It's an interview with Jim Fortune. I don't know if you guys know him, but I think some of you might. He is a pretty well-established name in the States. He coached big names like James Webmore. Uh, I think he's even very good friends uh, with James Webmore. They have houses up in that beautiful place in Texas. I always forget what it's called, but it's like it has this beautiful um, uh, Sedona. I think, yeah, Sedona is the right name. And um I was actually a student of Jim Fortune in 2019. I did a coaching program with him back then. It was a program that was around $3,000 for a three-month coaching program where we really dove deep into the hypnotherapy. And it's actually a skill that I got to learn from him how to incorporate uh, hypnotherapy in my work so yeah i can not only reprogram my own mind but the minds of my clients as well it's a very powerful tool i still uh, use in a lot of my coaching programs and uh, in this particular episode we dive into a couple of very interesting topics um i love like sharing this particular episode right now because i'm actually hosting a new webinar this upcoming Wednesday, which is called Making Money with Your Soul's Mission. If you have not signed up for this particular webinar, I would highly, highly, highly recommend you do because this webinar is about to change your freaking life and business. I'm telling you, if you are a female entrepreneur, if you are a manifesting generator and you are looking to make good money with your soul's mission, if you're ready to start building a life and a business that allows you to live in that like free like freedom state of mind like in the four hour week work week state of mind make good money and serve at the highest level you do not want to miss this particular webinar okay so make sure to join go to the show links right now make sure that you sign up before you forget it before you even tune into this podcast episode And then just like sit back, take a cup of tea and enjoy this hour long workshop basically with Jim Fortune and myself. We dive into like very interesting topics like how to break free from the social worker mentality, why momentum is so important to make more money in your business and how to really reframe your mind from a lose mentality to a winner mentality. I really, really hope you enjoy. I have enjoyed it. I have re-listened to it just now. And I think this is like an amazing episode for anyone who is looking to make more money with their soul's mission. And like, it's like an episode for my sisters, right? The sisters who just understand the energetic work, who understand like the spirit realm. And uh, I'm just so ready to serve you guys at a higher level this upcoming Wednesday. So make sure to be there. Hi. Hey. Hi, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Let's visit. How, first off, how are you doing? I am doing very fine. I got, I got to say, so much happened since I started the coaching, uh, mm-hmm. coaching program. It's really, it's been an amazing ride so far. So uh, really happy. That is good to hear. And we have a lot of territory to cover still. So we've got a lot of stuff to do in the program. Yes. So, so I'm very uh, curious to see what's going to happen. Um, well, that'll be up to you. Yeah, I know. Consumers? You know that. <laughs> yeah. um, who's your target market? Who are we talking to in your podcast? We're actually, well, mainly it's women. A lot of them are entrepreneurs. Um, Mm -hmm. A lot of women and male as well. They are already pretty connected to their spirit, spirit part. Uh, They, they get the whole spirit, spirituality. And um, they're all, all people who are looking to live more from the inside out. That's actually, that's my target. Okay. Okay. So normally I just hop on these and I go, you didn't send me any questions, which is fine. That's normal. 
Um, why don't you just lead the interview and our time together and I'll just follow and we'll just dialogue and have a good time. Yeah, that sounds great because that's how I actually love it to see what happens if we're just, uh, well, well, let, let the universe do the work. So yeah, let it just unfold. I'm, I'm good with that. That makes it really easy. Yeah. So maybe you can first tell the others a little bit about you because not everybody knows you. Some of them, of okay. course, do, but um, we have some questions of people who, uh, who follow me for you, but sure. maybe you can, uh, introduce yourself to start sure. off. Sure. Right now, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, so I was instructed to introduce myself. My name is Jim Fortin. I'm a transformational coach. I've done this for a lot of years. I've been in this in this genre for 25 years now. I um, formally, actually, I'm in uh, neuro linguistic programming, which is NLP, yeah. uh, created here in the 70s by Richard Bandler and John Grinder. A lady who taught me was taught by Bandler and Grinder. She's still a trainer today, has been for 30 years, very high level. Um, I've, I've trained at NLP for since 1994. Uh, I'm a master hypnotist, and I have been since 1998. So I've done that for a lot of years. Even though I don't do uh, hypnotherapy anymore, I use it, as you know, in yeah. my transformational programs to help people create core level yeah. you know, transformation. Uh, my expertise is actually brain-based habits, getting people to you know, change their habits at the brain-based level, knowing how to actually work with the part of the brain that actually manufactures habits, Mm -hmm. uh, identity, subconscious paradigms, and getting people, actually rather leading people how to transform their life from the inside out because most people actually start backwards. Yeah. They start from the outside in with their behavior, then they wonder why they don't get the results that they want. Yeah. I'll wrap this up here. I've done this for, as I said, a lot of years. I've worked all over the world. I've got one-to-one -one mm -hmm. clients. All of my one-to-one -one clients are seven-figure earners, entrepreneurs. Uh, many of them are probably well-known in Europe. I've worked with some of the most well-known women in Europe that are entrepreneurs. I've coached them one-to-one. -one. Um, and then obviously the transformational coaching program, which is a group program. You're in it right now. We've got people all the way from Japan to, to Moscow in that program. Yeah. So that's my background in a nutshell. Yeah. And you're, you're also the coach of uh, James Webmore. And a lot of my audience know James Webmore. You've coached Jim, James as well. Yeah. Yeah. I've coached James one-to-one. -one. And, and let me add there something you had said that I didn't add, I didn't add in there is my brother-in-law, um, as you know, uh, because you said that you have a spiritually aware uh, following, yeah. my brother-in-law is a shaman. Yeah. And when I say that, I really haven't even explained it in TCP, which for those of you listening, TCP is a transformational coaching program. My brother-in-law started apprenticing when he was six years old with shamans in That's Mexico. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he literally, um, a lot of people practice shamanism or are aware of shamanism. Um, if you're not aware of it, shamanism is the oldest form of, I'm not even going to say thought, but the oldest system on the planet. Um, anthropologists can trace it back 70,000 years, all the way to Siberia. Uh, shamanism means um, one who can see in the dark, yeah. uh, the original translation. Um, in Native American times, they would have been the medicine men. Yeah. So a lot of people practice shamanism, but people come to him uh, because I've, I've been with him. Uh, we've been inside the King's Chamber, the Great Pyramid, for two nights. We've been inside Uluru, which is uh, the, the crown chakra on the planet in Australia. We've been inside Palenque, Chaco Canyon, uh, Haleakala, Machu Picchu, uh, Island of the Sun. All these power spots on the planet doing ceremonies over the years. So I'm not sure where this is going to go, but I've, I've apprenticed with him since 1996. So that's, I guess, 23 years now that I've been a shaman's apprentice. And as you know, uh, my work is kind of a, has three pillars to it. It has the ancient wisdom, which is shamanism. Yeah. It has the transformational work, which is both, well, three things, transformational psychology, uh, brain-based habit change, and subconscious paradigms. Yeah. Whew. Okay, let's make it about <laughs> them now. Yeah, sure. First, I'm actually uh, curious, like you said yes to this podcast. Why did you say yes to it? And how do you want to feel at the end of the podcast? I always ask people for for their attention. Why did you say yes? And how do you want to feel? Um, I say no to most. Uh, the reason I said yes to yours is because you're a current student of mine. And if I can support you, then why wouldn't I do that? Yeah. Um, as far as feeling at the end, I don't really, no one's ever, I don't know. I've never thought about that before. Um, I enjoy doing them. So I guess to keep it really simple, I feel great when I do them. But yeah. I, I get a lot of requests and people that I, I mean this kindly, but they've got seven followers on Instagram. Yeah. That really doesn't help. There's no reciprocity I need. Uh, 
uh, exchange of energy there. So I generally don't do those. But anyone that's a student that asks, um, I'll generally do it. Yeah, very nice. And the reason why I always ask people at the beginning, also my clients, I always ask, how do you want to feel at the end of the the, 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 the podcast or, or the, the session? Because it really helps me to understand, well, what you what you're what you're come to bring but you say i want to feel joyful i want to i enjoy doing this so that's how i want to feel well it. yeah but that's not necessarily how i approach it though because the way that i approach it you being around me is this is my dharma yeah. um, especially when we start talking about the uh the more advanced spiritual stuff this is what i'm on the planet to do yeah right. so for me for me candidly it's just like okay i'm going to do what i'm going to do because this yeah. is what i do so yeah. I don't know how to explain it other than that. Yeah. So, so you actually have a blank canvas. And what do you yeah. wanna what do you wanna share with the audience? If you have like you have a blank canvas and you have to say what what is it that you would really love to share with with the um, audience? Because I think I would, we both have a similar message. We really want to transform people on a deep level. Okay. I, I work from a different direction in that you have questions. Let's start there. And the reason why is because whatever starts there will unfold naturally. Um, if I just start from what I want to share, I could I could literally not talk to anybody. And you really want what I mean is by that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but what I, what I mean by that is that I like to meet people where they are, yeah. uh, emotionally and psychologically. And if I just start going somewhere, that, that might not be where they are. Yeah. And so I want to start where they are, and actually let's see how it unfolds, and we'll go. Okay, perfect. Well, first of all, I had a question and I think a lot of my clients or followers have the question as well. I heard you talking in the, um, in the program about um, that you, at a certain point in your career, also um, uh, train, uh, gave trainings, but you didn't charge for it just to see if people would charge afterwards. Right. And you say that didn't work and now you right. actually charge again. So what is your whole philosophy about money and you also believe in giving unconditionally but you also yeah. art so can you explain a little bit about that topic to us let me take that apart number one is so i do one-to-one um, -one coaching and then i do the group programs yeah when i did the group programs my, my objective was let me see how many people that i can help yeah and i've always come from that place is let me see how many people i can help but here's the thing um, I don't know what percentage of people that you have that are also coaches or coaches or trainers. Yeah, large, large amount. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go here. You can't help everyone because a lot of people don't want help. Yeah. So a lot of people, for example, here in the States will say, you know what? Um, I want to go into your, your group program, but I can't afford it. Yeah. So what they do, uh, because literally there's probably 85, 90% of the population that will do nothing different. They will complain, they will moan, they will groan, they will pay, you know, paycheck to paycheck all over the world uh, because I work all over the world yeah. and they won't do anything differently. So when I would do the free programs, I thought, well, well, what if I could get transformation for them first and then they pay me yeah. very low participation rate and there, or, or accountability or responsibility. And the reason why is, is people don't appreciate what they don't pay for. Yeah. So now, you know, you know, the investment point on my program. And I have the investment point there for a reason. One, because it's not, and I, I probably should should raise the investment. Yeah, because it's pretty, it's still pretty low. I mean, for the, yeah. for the value that you get. For a lot of people have said, have said that, exactly. Yeah. And the thing is this, I want it to be enough of a hurdle that people that registered are like, you know, mm, I've got skin in the game, so I better show up and I better do the work because, yeah. you know, that's good money. Um, and then I've got a lot of people like, wow, it's, it's not more than – somebody once told me, they, goes, they said, you know, I thought it'd be $15,000 per person just for the group. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and for the level that I work at, I mean, I, I coach multimillionaires. I mean, one of my clients makes $100 million a year, yeah. you know? So I'm, I'm balancing, and I'm, I'm not sure where it's going to go yet, but I'm balancing. And I'll come back to the question. I'm yeah. balancing because this applies to everybody here. Um, yeah, that's what I think. absolutely is how can I make the greatest impact and serve the greatest amount of people, um, obviously attract the value back that I create in the world by obviously revenue and income so I can build my team and, and help more people. Um, but here's something I want people to get is I've always, I used to have what, what I call the social worker mentality, meaning I want to help a lot of people. Yeah. And the reality is a lot of people don't want to be helped. And they, they, and they may, let me counter that, they may, but they won't do 
anything differently yeah. because they're afraid if I do anything else that I'm going to already lose what I have. Therefore, I'm going to just keep doing the same things over and over and over again. And I tell people, if I, for example, let me, if I, if I said to, to somebody, somebody listening, I'm going to give you a hundred thousand yeah. dollars and you can either put a kid through college or you can invest in a homeless shelter. What do you think the better investment is? I, it's an interesting question. I don't know. I, my first response would be to put my kid to college. Okay. Uh, or I, sh- I could say that differently. Put a kid through college or take some money and get them out of a homeless shelter. But here's the thing. It's a better investment to actually take and put the kid through college because they're already in momentum. Yeah. Um, life momentum. The person in the homeless shelter, guess what? By self-image psychology, and I've, I've experimented with this. I've done it. Yeah, I took a I took a lady and her four oh, kids. I know. And got them yeah. yeah, and one of my former students used to be a social worker, and she goes, "Jim, it's not hard to get women off the streets. It's hard to keep them off the streets." Yeah. I took a mother, four kids, put them up in a hotel for like two and a half months, till we got her into a a, um, a a shelter for families where you know she could stabilize her life. Yeah. So, some female students helped me do it. And I paid for it and some other people chipped in some money. And guess what? Once two and a half months were up and we got her in the shelter, she actually uh, didn't go and went right back to the streets again. Yeah. So my whole point to answer your question is all of us, many of us want to help people, but not everyone wants to be helped or they want somebody to give them a lifeline and do all the work for them, but they won't do any work themselves. So that's why I recognize that, you know what, for me to help more people, I need to actually raise the investments on my programs. So I'm attracting a certain level of people yeah. like you, um, or people that are entrepreneurs or business people or people that are serious about transformation. Yeah. And as you know, we, we give a whole lot in that program. Yeah, you do. You know, we're there um, with my coaches and myself. We're there because it's heart centered. Yeah. But to answer your question here is you can't help people that don't want to be helped. Yeah. 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 It's interesting because I recently had a conversation with somebody and she says, yeah, I was talking about, uh, about raising prices. And I said to her, you, you should really raise your price because you're so low at this point. And she said, but I want to help everybody. No, but that's like, that's how people think. That's, that's how a lot of people think. I want to help everybody. So I have to do a low pricing. I've been, I've been there even doing it free and, and yeah. you know, some not 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 even well, actually it's probably 25 percent of the program you're going through but it was geared for real estate agents so there's a lot of other stuff in it yeah and they had i had a massive no-show rate no yeah. skin in the game yeah and so hopefully that example for people listening if you have the social worker mentality you're going to make social worker money yeah. which in the united states a, a beginning social worker is about thirty five thousand dollars a year yeah, probably it doesn't work and also I learned from my brother-in-law, the shaman, when I started apprenticing with him, he said, if you want to move, he stretched his arms out. If you want to move this far, I'll move you that far. Yeah. If you want to move that far, I will move you that far. Yeah. So I look for people that want to move. You know, they really want to go out and do something because I can, this person here, like James Wedmore, who yeah. I've, I've helped him, he'll tell you, I've literally helped him almost uh, quadruple his revenue in 18 months under two years. Yeah. And He's, he's, I mean, he's, he's moving. I can help him because he's in momentum. This person here also, I want everyone to understand this, this person here that really wants to move. And this is, are you doing video or audio? So I can tell them what I'm doing. I'm video and audio. Okay. So, so I'm, stre- I'm stretching my arms out for you audio people, meaning like a yardstick. <laughs> um, but if the, for, and for the, and then I've got my fingers close together. Here's the thing. People that are already in momentum and they're really moving are, oh my gosh a lot less work than yeah. people not in momentum. Yeah. People not in momentum will, they wear you out because yeah. they're, they're always dog paddling. They're always, you know, help 911. I'm drowning. Nothing's working. Well, that's why you are where you are. Mm-hmm. So in my one-to-one coaching predominantly, that's why I only coach seven figure earners because even seven figure earners uh, think differently than six figure earners. Yeah, sure. Um, and if I'm off track, you have a lot of entrepreneurs, so let me know, okay? Yeah. No, but, you're doing fine. <laughs> you know, every person that I coach um, probably, well, makes um, over about $5 million a year right now. Mm. These people also, uh, because we're humans, they have blind spots. And so my job is to actually see their blind spots because yeah. that's where people sabotage themselves. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, James Wedmore had them, and I, rem- I saw the blind spots, removed them, and his business is near tripled in, in that amount of time. Mm-hmm. But when people are seven figure earners, and I see the blind spot, I get changed, finger snap, just like that. I'm like, here we go. Here's the blind spot. Let's just shift this. And they mm-hmm. shift right away. People that are, are under six figures or lower six figure earners, number one, I'm going to tell you, if you're making under a quarter million, 300,000 a year, you're still working way too hard. Yeah. You're like you're on a bicycle and you're pedaling really fast. So the lower earners are like, but why do I want to change that? But I've always done it that way. And I, I don't want to change that right now. And let me give you an excuse as to why I can't change. Excuse A, B, C, and D. Whereas seven figure earners are like, okay, done deal. Yeah. James, James Wedmore is one of the easiest people I've ever coached because all I said is, look here, see this blind spot changed immediately. Yeah. So yeah. I want your audience to hear that is that, I know you probably have a fair amount of U.S. equivalent dollar uh, six-figure earners, yeah. but it's not the same thing mentally at lower six figures as it is seven figures and beyond for people. Yeah. And I'm also wondering if, I think in Holland, uh, there are not so many entrepreneurs that even make seven figures. I don't know yeah. if, what your view is about that because we're a smaller country. I always think it's harder for us to make seven figures, but maybe that's also just a story. I don't it's a know. story. It's a story. Okay. Let me tell you why um, it's a story. Is I, It's so funny to me that, like, for example, you're involved in American entrepreneurship, online marketing, et cetera. Yeah. So, you know, there are a lot of, well, not a lot. I would, well, no, I would say according to the standard population, there's probably 3% of us that make over a million a year, several yeah. million a year, just like just statistics, okay? Um, when I look at this, though, I remember a couple of, one of my good friends, um, his name is Rich Sheffrin. He's been around for a lot of years. For about a decade, he was known as literally just the number one internet marketer in the world. I've known him for a lot of years and we were hanging out back in 2015 um, at his office and he was doing an event. Uh, he, he was doing transformational weekends for a little while, decided not to do them. But this guy came from Brazil and he brought an interpreter with him, a sharp young guy, but probably early 30s at that point, married, kids, et cetera, just kind of just getting started, started out. And within 18 months, he'd already made his first million in Brazil. The reason why, like Holland or Germany or Switzerland, you guys have none of this going on over there like we have here. No. Our, mar- our markets, um, unless you're a really savvy marketer, which I am, I mean, I don't mean that arrogantly, but I am. Yeah. Um, unless you're a really savvy marketer, it's challenging in the U.S. market because there's just so many people because we've got, you know, we've got all these free resources like Instagram and Facebook and, mm-hmm. and now ad spend is a lot higher. But if you're in countries that don't actually, your market's not saturated, you've got a wide open playing field. Yeah. Like you, I know they don't speak up a lot because they're in my mastermind, but like Julia in Germany who's working on gut health. Yeah. I mean, there's only a few people in the entire country so we can position her as like the leading expert in Germany. And we're doing it by her numbers and everything else. But I would say in Holland, just like uh, uh, this gentleman in, in Brazil, you guys said, well, it's a little harder. But I think it, the way I frame it in my mind, I got a wide open playing field right mm-hmm. now all over Europe. Yeah. Interesting. You know, I, I have one client, I had a female in England. Um, you may know of her. I'm not going to mention her name. But she was a one-to-one client. She owns a membership website. And it's really inexpensive. It's $37 a month. And she has, I think at this point, 8,000 members on it. Oh, wow. So do the math. I yeah. don't even know what that is. Well, I don't know what that amount is. Yeah. But she's making millions and millions a year as a female entrepreneur, a membership site in England. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. yeah. So everything's out there. And it's interesting just how you frame it because you could also look at it as so much possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the way I look at any other market. I mean, I I know how to compete in my marketplace here in the U S when I say compete, I mean, with my marketing, my positioning and all that. But sometimes I'm like, gosh, I really wished that I lived like, and I, you know, I worked out of Switzerland or something because there's nobody doing like no one dominates in those markets because most of you probably actually, well, your case in point, many of you don't even look in your own marketplace. You come to the U S yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because actually I always look for resources outside Holland because there's no one there that I hear that I find inspiring enough. Exactly. I feel yeah. like I'm, I'm, I'm the most like, I like myself, I like my own stuff. And then other than that, I'll, I look abroad. Exactly. Now, you know, what's interesting is as a political science major in college and I took a geography class and I made an A in it. I used to love that stuff. 
but I'm going to be a little ignorant here. I assume that people in Holland learn both. Is it Danish? Is it, uh, no, Dutch, 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 Dutch. Dutch. I apologize. So guys, don't throw darts at me. Dutch. No, yeah. but I, assume, I assume they probably learn both Dutch and English as yeah, languages. And German and French. That's what I thought. Yeah. Like four or five languages. Yeah. Um, so would you say that most people there speak Dutch and English? Yeah. Oh, everybody. I mean, we even have English people working here that don't even speak Dutch. So when you go to a coffee shop, they only speak, speak English. Yeah. And it was my bad. Denmark <laughs> is Danish. Sorry about that guys. Okay. Just, popped in my, just popped in my mind for a second. <laughs> but what I look at is I wonder what percentage of people in Switzerland or France or Germany or, you know, any of those countries surround, well, you're all together over there. I mean, all, yeah. you could put all of Europe in Texas, yeah, for size, I mean, you know, where yeah, I live. Yeah. Uh, you know, you drive 10 miles and you cross the border to the next country. Yeah. I'm making yeah. that out. But I look at that and I'm like, you know, there's some, forever, all of you listening or watching, there's massive opportunity. And I, like I said, I think a lot of you guys are coming to the States and you're missing your own marketplace yeah. because there are probably a lot of people also that are very uh, nationalistic or, or patriotic or something that want somebody that I want. Like I used to have a client, um, seven figure earner. He's from Australia. He and his wife live in British Columbia now. And he's like, I really like working with Australians. Mm -hmm. And you know what? The, the Australia is a little further along than, let's say, Europe for internet marketing. Yeah. And I tell you, there's that, just that, that community of nationality where people do like to work with their own kind, so to speak. Yeah. And that's actually brain-based. Go mm -hmm. ahead. I, I think maybe it's even the other way around in the Netherlands because we're so um, not patriotic that we yeah. actually think America is always better than, than Holland. And we say, oh, we, we don't do anything so good. So just go to the States. Everything is done better there. I think yeah. that's actually what we think. You know, I see a lot of that. And it's so funny. We won't go too far here. But a lot of the world, you know, the, you, Russia and China and the U.S. and all these tensions and all this kind of stuff. But for the most, and every civilization falls, but for the most part, pretty much anything in the world, like we're talking right now because of Americans on the, my yeah. laptop and, yeah. and the internet was, you know, you know, it's like everything came out of here. doesn't mean the, the world, the U.S. dominates. No. And we do have it here. But I, I would look at, for me, I, I would look if I were European, I would look on, okay, how can, the place that I would look is how can I actually uh, market to people in my target market over here on this side of the pond yeah. and get them to want to work with me as opposed to going to the United States. And every bit of that's just marketing. Yeah. Just focus on whole of Europe, not even just the Netherlands, just Europe in, in the whole of Europe. Yeah. And you can yeah. talk to them in English all together, of course. Yeah. What else you got your questions there? Yeah. The question I already also have a lot of my customers always ask the question, okay, but my people, my, my customers don't want to pay. They don't have the money to pay, to pay my program. And how do you fix that? Because you also you get people who, who want your coaching, but they don't have the money. Well, it depends at what level you're talking about. When I co um, which I had somebody recently tell me he he's seven figure, and he goes, you know, Jim, you should charge a hundred thousand for one to one coaching. Yeah. I don't. Um, I charge twenty five thousand for twelve calls. Uh, yeah. It's the same program you're going through, but I look at I they send me their homework, and I'm looking for all their blind spots in the homework. So it's it's a different, even though it's the same, it's different. Um. This is what I know is at every price point, there is money. Mm -hmm. So let's look at Europe for a second. Okay. Ferrari. Yeah. You know what? Not like only one tenth of a percent of people can afford Ferraris. Ferrari yeah. doesn't care. You know why? Because there's enough people to pay for the Ferrari. Mm -hmm. I drive a Porsche. Um, ain't cheap, you know, um, expensive cars out of Germany uh, and not everybody can afford a Porsche, but you know what? Porsche doesn't say, well, you know what? We should actually just really, really drop our price points because not everyone can afford us. Mm -hmm. This is what I know. And, and by the way, so you guys know, even though I do transformational work, um, I've taught subconscious persuasion and influence for 20 years as well. And I've woven that into marketing, sales, um, advertising, and all that. This is what I know. Anywhere in the world, there's money all over the world. And I have been to Europe. And there are a lot of people in Europe that have a lot of money. Yeah, sure. Uh, just like in the United States. And there are a lot of people that have no money. Yeah. Well, you have to look at is who you're, who you're marketing to. Mm -hmm. One of my clients, Julia in Germany teaches gut health. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Germany is one of the most stable economies in the world mm -hmm. right now. One of the strongest economies in the world. You can't tell me there's not money in Germany. And she was charging like four ninety seven for her gut health program. I'm like, nope, that's, that's the, the wrong price point. Charge 1,997. And she said the same thing. Well, people in Germany won't pay it. Yeah. So you know what? 
People in Germany, when they get sick, they feel just like Americans. They feel bad. And when somebody feels bad, they will pay any amount of money not to feel bad anymore. Mm. So this is what I tell people. And I understand there's a different, there's some kind of different energy around money in Europe and Japan and places like that than there is in the U.S. Um, I don't know why. It's partly cultural. I get yeah. that. Like, like people in my mastermind, I have to coach differently my Europeans and my Japanese than I do my Americans because um, Japanese have a more reserved culture. Like I, I can't tell my, my Germans uh, to, to use the same email sequence that I use because you don't want to inundate people with email. It's just a different culture over there. Yeah, if you do that in Holland, people will freak, <laughs> freak out. And that's why it's all framing. That's yeah. why you tell people, you know what? So if I were if I were marketing in Holland, I would say, you know what? I know that you're not used to this, but I want to stay in more contact with you and make it to a benefit to them. The reason why is because if we're doing gut health, I want to help you feel better every every day. Mm -hmm. I know it isn't usual for us here in Holland to get as many emails, but they do it in the states, and there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. It's called reframing. I change the way that my prospect looks at what I do. Yeah. And I still, I don't go crazy with it. I mean, I still, I still kind of tiptoe an eggshell around it, but this is what I know. Anything properly marketed anywhere in the world can be sold at any price point. Yeah. You look at Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce doesn't say, you know what? Ah, our cars are too high. People can't afford them. Mm -hmm. It's all marketing. And do you think the, the major problem is that people actually don't stick to their prices and then when it doesn't work the first time they go back to their old prices? Yes. And before that, though, I think a lot of people in Europe are afraid and uh, like um, like Japan, um, they're afraid to charge. Yeah. Uh, why? Because if a person, so for example, let's say that my program, you're in it, the, the investment was twenty nine ninety seven. You're yeah. in the program. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you think twenty nine ninety seven is a lot of money, you won't charge twenty nine ninety seven for your own program. No. Right. See, this is what we have to look at here. So if, if I live in Holland and I'm like, you know what? Geez, you know. People here in Holland, they think 997 is a lot of money. And then I believe that. Guess what? I'm not going to charge 997. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge 497. I'm going to make half the money that I can. I'm going to charge 497 and say, well, okay, wow, how come I look at those Americans and they're making seven figures and I'm barely making $84,000 a year doing the same work over here? Yeah. So this is what I tell people, and this is transformational work, is that your wealth is governed by your identity. And whatever you think is a lot of money is actually going to be a lot of money for you. And if you think a thousand bucks is a lot of money, then you're not going to charge people a thousand. They're not going to pay you a thousand. And therefore you're going to say, see, I told you it's hard to make money. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting. They got to look at money differently themselves first before they can charge higher. Yeah. And what I look at here with you is that you actually, you actually, I'm not the right words, not the going rate, but you watch, you follow a lot of the United States. So you see how you see our price points. Yeah. So for me, it's like uh, charging four thousand is is not a big thing because yeah. I listen to you guys over and over and over again, and it becomes normal at a certain point. And and what I would do if I were you is I would take what I'm learning in the states, bring it right back, charge higher price points. Yeah. I can't tell you my the amount of people um, that I have in my in my mastermind. They're they're from all over the world. And even though these people are paying me 25000 for the mastermind, I'm having to work on them to get them, my Europeans, to shift their mindset that, you know what, just because everyone else in Germany does it that way doesn't mean you have to do it that way. Yeah. Because I tell you, like I said, Germany's a robust economy. I mean, Mercedes-Benz comes out of Germany. Porsche comes out of Germany. BMW comes out of Germany. And I'm just mentioning some cars. And like there, I'm sure statistically that you've got a certain amount of the population that's got money, a certain amount of the population doesn't have money. That certain amount that does, guess what? They have money. But yet, people are saying, well, we don't do it that way in Germany, therefore I can't charge. But these people are still buying BMWs and you know, big homes and TVs and traveling all over the world. Yeah. They have the money. And people just, they don't see it that way when they live there. Yeah, and I think also there's a little bit of stigma in the Netherlands that they say like you, sh you shouldn't charge high prices for healthcare stuff, for example, that yeah. makes you... On, uh, on ethical or something. Okay, so let's look at that for a second. Yeah. Um, what I look at is, is that true? Or is that just cultural, cultural thought? I think it's a less, I think it's cultural. It's, it's, abs it's absolutely cultural thought. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, it depends. I mean, like for example, let's go to different places with this. My brother-in-law being a shaman, mm -hmm. um, he's not allowed to charge. He charges no, nothing. Yeah. So let's, let's go here for everyone listening. So he, 
He doesn't charge at all. When people come to him, they've got stage four cancer and they've had brain tumors and they've had strokes. He charges them $189 for the first call, yeah. which lasts about four hours. So what's he making? I don't know, 45 bucks an hour. Um, and then he didn't charge anything after that. And if people want a gift, they can. If they don't, some people don't at all. Yeah. And that, that's up to them. That's, that's their life, their karma and everything. The way that I look at it, though, is in business, because I, I walk that fine line between yeah, serving, I yeah, the, the fine line between serving and the fine line between also, the way I look at it, is life is like an ATM machine. Mm -hmm. And if I keep taking money out, which means I serve everybody, but I put no money back in, very quickly I have no money. You I have help. no money, yeah, yeah. I, I'm out of business. Then I can't help anyone, you mm -hmm. know, because my team, I mean, my team, I mean, I just, I just paid a video marketing guy $120,000. Like $20, mm -hmm. I'm paying another digital PR firm fifteen grand, mm -hmm. uh, plus another marketing uh, podcast cast person five grand so that's not that's 150 grand out the window yeah. so that i can reach more people yeah but i can't do that if i don't charge mm -hmm. and if i can't if i don't charge and i can't reach more people yeah so i look at it psychologically is that i honor what i do and what i ask the universe for is bring me back fair value our fair, fair compensation for the fair value that i put out in the world mm -hmm. and here's the price point that i choose to work at yeah yeah. So, and about people charging for healthcare, I, I get that, but you know what? You guys aren't government run, you're private practice. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, you charge, whatever, you charge whatever you want to charge because also this is what drives human beings. Status drives human beings. Mm -hmm. And you don't believe me? Go to Monaco and the mm -hmm. casinos and everything, okay? I mean, money, money makes the world go round. Yeah. Uh, people clamor for status all over the world. It's hardwired in the brain. It's believed to be partly a survival mechanism. There are people that will pay good money in Holland for an exclusive international healthcare coach or something like mm -hmm. that. Those people are there all day long. Yeah. And can you explain us a little bit something about how that works in your brain? So all those things we think, like, okay, I can charge that kind of money, and people actually don't, well, don't charge because they're scared of that thought. What happens in the brain? What makes that people don't actually take action? It's not so much in the brain as it is in the identity is okay. that people have learned that, you know what, we just don't do it that way in Holland. Yeah. You know, and I look at the world, the people that do things in the world are people who do it the way other people don't do it. They're yeah. the ones who go out and they break the molds yeah. because this is what I know. This is what I've learned over the years. And even listening to me, um, I'm considered an expert, but I don't believe in experts. And the reason why is because experts are wrong 20% of the time. I believe that uh, people that do what I do or anything, they have really informed opinions and they're not always right. Yeah. Um, when it comes to marketing though, guys, I've done this for a lot of years, made people a lot of money. So listen yeah. to me on this one. Is I tell people that no matter where you are in the world, go do what you do at whatever price point you want and hold the intention. I think the intention is the key. Hold the intention that you're going to find the right people. The right people are going to find you. Um, and you're going to create what I call Aini, which is ancient Incan. You've heard me mention before. Um, Aini, A-Y-N-I is the reciprocity of life. You're going to serve them. They're going to serve you. Yeah. I, don't, I don't anymore get into, oh my gosh, well, I'm in Bolivia and Bolivians don't market that way or Japan or New Zealand. I don't, I don't get into that. Mm -hmm. What I do want to be careful about here a little bit to not mislead anybody is I observe, like when I'm coaching my, my international people, my mastermind. Um, I'll, you know, I already know them all personally, but I'm like, okay, so you know what, uh, Claudia, you're in Switzerland. Let's talk about how they do it in Switzerland. Now let's push the envelope a little bit yeah. and then let, let, let's push the envelope. Let's offer something that no one else is offering and let's position and market it in a way that people in Switzerland, Switzerland are like, oh, okay. Yep. I get it. Uh, other people don't do it the way Claudia does, but yeah, now I know why she does it the way that she does yeah, because everyone's wanting something everywhere in the world. Yeah. I mean, you, you look at, for example, how Russia has transformed in the last 30 years or 25 years. You look at Russians that want to buy American products. Mm. But let's look at it because they want, they want the stat. When I, when I lived in Japan as a kid, uh, you know what? Everyone wanted my Levi's in yeah. Japan because they couldn't get them, right? Yeah. So, but, but what I don't see is I've never, which I don't go to the mall. I don't, I don't, you guys have malls in Europe, right? Yeah. yeah, I don't go to the mall. I don't like the energies. Yeah. You know what? I've never walked into the mall and seen not, not ever a single store selling Russian products no. like Russian blue jeans or something or whatever. But I guarantee you, you go to Moscow 
and you're going to find Levi and you're going to find Versace and you're going to find all these international brands there. Humans want status. Yeah. That's why kids, when I lived in Japan, wanted my Levi's. Mm -hmm. um, this is partly hardwired in the brain is that we want status. Everyone wants to go to the higher level and they want other people to perceive them to be at a higher level. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So I play on that. Yeah. Very nice. I have another question from one of my old clients and she says, um, if I go, for years, I've wanted to turn my home into a loving high frequency space. So it supports me to feel aligned. I've always told myself, I'm just not that kind of person to live in a wonderful, not messy, nicely decorated place that I didn't have it in me. Now I know it's just a story, but still I don't seem to be able to make big progress regarding the subject. What would be your advice to really make a big shift transformation this summer? What could it be that's holding me back? Thank you so much, Sophie has introduced me to you and your podcast. And so far, I love every episode. Okay, thank you. She said a lot there. I don't have enough back history, but let me actually just, I know uh, something about her so I can yeah. answer. Okay, so number one is she says, I'm not the kind of person. Well, mm -hmm. whatever kind of person we are is what we do in the world. Yeah. If you're not the kind of person who spends money, even though you've got money, then you don't spend money. Yeah. So if I had to guess, she grew up in a way, something along the lines of don't show off. Or don't be, don't, don't, don't stand out, which there's yeah. a lot of that in Europe. Yeah. Don't be, don't be too, uh, don't, don't pull attention to yourself. Yes. Right. Which I, I see a lot of that in Europe. So people learn that, okay, I'm not going to do anything that's going to have anybody pay any attention to me. Yeah. Or have um, so uh, negative comments or whatever. Exactly. This is what I tell people. And it's so simple that most of us miss it is that this is your life. Why don't I just live your life? Period. Yeah. I know that's so simple, but people miss that. But they're like, no, it can't be that simple. No, it's that simple. Yeah, My and also, brother -in -law, just to, to one second, you also said in one of the coaching calls, you're going to be judged anyway, mm -hmm. no matter what you do. So do what you want because you're going to be judged anyway. I love that one as well. Yeah, so let me add that for a lot of people here. Is so what I tell people is that no matter what you do, it yeah. doesn't matter whether you're a musician or an acupuncturist or a podcaster or a YouTuber or prime minister, it doesn't matter what you do. You're going to be judged because other people are going to judge you because that's what they do. Yeah. Now you look at you guys, you're judging people all day long. Every yeah. one of you are judging people all day long for whatever it is. Yeah. Now I'm running, uh, I'm starting my runway for my fall program, the fall transformational program. And I posted a video. My videographer came over, shot a video and Nikki, my project manager said, I want some B real of uh, B roll, B real, whatever you call it. Yeah. Uh, it's the, the back footage. I always get oh, that yeah. wrong. Yeah. Okay. But she goes, I want you like, I want you in your car and stuff like that. Oh, so yeah. there's a little bitty snippet of me and my Porsche. Yeah. Uh, and somebody from Europe commented and said, Oh, you must be successful because you drive a Porsche. Mm -hmm. Now I don't argue with people online. Uh, it's a waste of time. Yeah. All that I said was all that I said is I drive a Porsche because I like driving. That's all that I said. <laughs> and he responded back. He goes, well, I get it. He said, he said, I get it. It's part of you substantiating your success, but you're trying too hard, mate. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That falls right in the lines of Europeans. Okay. Yeah. But what I said to him is, you know what? If I drive a Porsche, people are going to judge me. If I walk, people are going to judge me. It doesn't yeah. matter what I do. I could drive a Porsche, a Ferrari, or a bicycle in this video, and somebody's going to judge me somewhere. Mm -hmm. So why not? Why don't I just do what I do, enjoy it, help people, and let people judge that are going to judge? He yeah. didn't respond back. Yeah. But that's right. You, so, you know, I look at people wherever you live. Like, for example, the best example, and I do, I, I, I don't attach to things. Like a car is just a hunk of metal to me. But I like, I, I like that car. I like to drive it. <laughs> now, if I drive, which I do, if I drive a Porsche, some people are going to judge me and say, wow, that guy can afford a Porsche maybe. Or then some people could say, I bet he's in debt. Two different things, right? Yeah. Somebody else could say only jerks drive Porsches because they got to show off to people. Mm. Some people could say, you know what? He appreciates fine cars. Yeah. You know, all these opinions about a hunk of metal that I'm driving. <laughs> that's what people do is they opinionate all day long. Mm. So whether she updates her house or she doesn't, what she's doing, she's giving her life away to everyone else yeah. in her life because of her past. Yeah. So instead of living in the way that she wants to live, she's saying, oh, let me live the other way that people want me to live because if I don't, they're going to say something about me. So I'm going to, I'm going to live a life that it's not really the life I want to live. Yeah. Yeah. But it's difficult for people to, to, to let go of that story. It, okay. Notice what you said. 
Yeah. Notice the story you have about it. You said it's difficult. Yeah, I know. Okay. Here's the thing. If you just go do it, people are going to chatter for a bit and then they're over it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm a little, uh, what's the word? I'm a little, I used to live in New York City, even though I'm from, from Texas. I used yeah. to live in New York and in New York, anything goes. You're going to see anything and everything in New York from the yeah. richest, most famous people in the world on the streets walking around to homeless people. Yeah. To just everything. You see everything to the nth degree. So to me, it's kind of like, eh, already seen it. But I don't, I don't even like draw my attention there anymore mm -hmm. because I've got clients who live in penthouses on Park Avenue. And I used to help out a homeless guy who lived on my street. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I've just seen the whole, the whole gamut. My thing is this, that's the old American phrase. And it's probably not even American. Whatever floats your boat. Yeah. Because people are going to judge you. So why, you know, why live your life and why give your life away to other people? Yeah. My brother-in-law said to me one time, um, he's a shaman, he's a sorcerer, he's a babalao, um, and he's many other things. But he said to me one time, he goes, you know, um, he said, I'm a shaman, I'm a sorcerer, I'm a babalao. Some people think that I'm evil and I represent the devil. Mm -hmm. Some people think that I'm a spiritual master and they come to me for healing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what people think. I am what I am. Yeah, that's pretty. And so that's where I live from is that I am what I am. And everyone is what they are, but so many people are afraid because our two biggest fears are the fear of inadequacy, I'm not good enough, or the fear of, of abandonment. If I step out there, people are going to reject me. But this is what I know also. If you're in this crowd and you get rejected, there's somebody else that's going to like you because you're not part of that crowd anymore. Yeah. There's always going to be, you know, cliques and, and mm -hmm. just human nature. Mm -hmm. So guess what? If I don't fit in that tribe, don't care. I'll yeah. fit in this tribe over here because this tribe's going to actually not like that tribe. And this tribe over here is going to actually mm -hmm. like me even more. Yeah. And do you ever get confused about who you are? Do you ever get confused about what, you, uh, what your role is or? No, I just mean, I'm just, I, this is a phrase. I was again, back to my brother-in-law, I was walking. And by the way, I want to add something here. Somebody sent me an email and said, why don't you own all that work as your own? Well, I do. It is mine, mm -hmm. but I also give credit where credits due. Yeah. And sure. so the things that he taught me, I want to share. I'm not mentioning his name. I'm not selling anything for him. You know, it's no big deal. I'm not promoting him. We were in Mexico a lot of years ago and I was in a lot of life transition and he just looked at me and he said, this is a, a life philosophy for me. Just be. Mm. And what he meant was, is whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, wherever you want to go, just be that because yeah. people are going to pick at you all day long. Yeah. Look, look at the tabloids here in the States. I don't, you guys probably have them too. Yeah. I know they do in, in England, but look at the tabloids. Look at how, you know, it's, it's so funny how celebrities um, get their lives picked apart mm. by people that, you know, this person could be a celebrity making a billion dollar franchise of movies, but yet there's somebody sitting in a trailer house in Arkansas here in the United States, reading this publication, judging them. Yeah. And I tell, I tell people that, you know, the metaphor is that, it's a parable that um, a very wealthy man or a woman drives up to a stoplight in a very expensive Mercedes and they look over at the homeless person and they snarl at the homeless person for being homeless. Mm. And the homeless person snarls at the person in the Mercedes for snarling at them. And then I say, who's better? Yeah. Either. They're both doing the same thing. They're both judging each other. Yeah. You know? So the way, the way I've learned to live my life is, you know what, I'm going to just do what I'm going to do and people are going to judge. That's great. People want to, you know, tag along and, Hang out. That's great too. We can't please everyone. That's the surest way to fail in life. Surest way is to live literally an incomplete life is to try to please everyone because it ain't going to happen. And I think that's the energy that people pick up from, right? If you're really just living your own life like you are and like I, I am trying to do in my way, that's the energy that people find appealing that you do what you want to do. I, I think so. I do what I, I, I do what I want to do with respect to other people. Like yeah. I don't tell other people, you know, here, there's a lot of things. Uh, I, I sometimes, uh, like we Americans, we don't get the real news. Uh, you have to go to Europe to read London Times or something and see what's really going on in the U.S. Because especially yeah. the last four or five years, the news is so convoluted. But I know you guys look at us over here. A lot of people do. And this is what I tell people. You know, if you don't want if you don't want an abortion, then don't have one. Yeah. But don't tell other people they can't have one. Yeah. If you don't like gay marriage, don't get gay married. But don't tell other people they can't have rights. Mm -hmm. If you don't like alcohol, then don't drink alcohol. But don't tell other people they can't have alcohol. Yeah. You know, so I, I look at humans and I'm like, do whatever you want to do without hurting anyone else that's going to make you happy. 
Mm. And so many people have a hard time living from that place because yeah. if they live from that, oh my gosh, what is my mother going to think? And especially, what is my mother going to think? Mm. We have somebody in the TCP right now, yeah. a transformational coaching program, and she uh, grew up in a deeply religious family. And she actually spoke up on the call and said, well, I'm afraid that if I don't live in that way, then my family's like not going to appreciate or they're going to kind of reject me. She's in her 40s thereabouts living what she learned 35 years ago. Yeah. I tell people no matter what you are or who you are or how you want to live, as long as you're creating no harm, do that yeah. because you're even your mother and your family's going to criticize you too, because you know what? It's kind of like, Oh my gosh, somebody got out of line. We need to put them right back in line again. Mm -hmm. we, we live on a planet of robots yeah. for the most part, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny, a lot of people judge me as well, but they also appreciate me because I do what I want to do. And that's what they ultimately actually find inspiring that you do. Yeah. Exactly. Well, thinking about notice it. that. No, yeah. Yes. Notice that is that you do what you want to do and there are going to be people that are going to judge you. And there are people like, wow, that's really cool. And the ones I, I love that kind of positioning, the polarity. And it's great for marketing. And the reason why is because those that are going to judge you are going to talk about you. And those that actually like what you're doing are going to talk about you. And they're going to talk about you to each other. And they're going to argue back and forth, which creates more, more coverage for you, more press, more, mm -hmm. more chatter about you. Mm -hmm. I literally, honestly, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I wish I could tell everyone listening or watching how this happened for me. I was sitting with my brother-in-law. He's a shaman. He's also a medium. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to just kind of leave it at that. And I was with him one night. And after he was done working, we just started chit-chatting about stuff. And I don't know why, and this is a lot of years ago, I just don't know why it hit me so hard. But he says, you know what? So many people worry about what other people think about them. Who cares? Mm -hmm. And when he just said it in that way, for some reason, I don't know what shifted, what lever moved in my brain, but I'm like, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. It just makes perfect sense. Because no matter you put yourself out there on Facebook, people are going to judge or Instagram. And people are going to tell you that, you know what, you're stupid and you don't know this and you don't know that. And who are you to be doing this? And this is what I've learned also. Um, a lot of you, please listen to this. It's generally the critics that are the ones not doing anything in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I, I recorded an episode about that. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. look at, for example, like James or I and people that, you know, you might follow. Number one is we're not critical people. I mean, we have our, everyone has their stuff. But I'm not going to criticize anybody online. Why? Because you know what? They're out there doing something. And I've been there. I've been in those pits. Mm -hmm. It's generally I find the people that hide, especially on Facebook, they hide behind a blank profile. Yeah. Or all they do, they got a picture of a kitten because I've clicked on them before. <laughs> and they got like nothing there except something political or something. But they're hiding. Mm -hmm. But yet I'm going to hide. But let me go attack people who are actually doing something. Yeah. And the way that I look at it, guys, the more that I get attacked, the better work that I'm doing. Because um, Sophie's been with me for a bit. Uh, my program tends to be early adopters, people that are, are forward thinking, open people. But when I start talking about more advanced spirituality, um, that makes people mad. Some mm -hmm. people. Why? Yeah. Not in the program, but in life. Yeah. Why? Because that violates their belief system. And if their belief system is violated, even if it's not real or mm -hmm. true, they're going to fight. And that's what people do. Mm -hmm. And I look at my role on this planet. I call myself uh, the, the American word, the rebel rouser. Mm -hmm. It's my job to rattle the cage to get mm -hmm. people to wake up. So if they're going to toss stones at me for that, then let them toss stones. Yeah. So all of you, this is not about me. This is about you guys. You know, I've coached James. Yeah. James used to not want to rock the boat um, in one-to-one -one coaching. Yeah. yeah. Did I tell you or did he tell you? No, you told us, yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 And I said, you know what? Your very next video, I want you to rock the boat. As a matter of fact, flip the boat over. And that was his most viewed video that he's ever had. Mm. Um, I mean, he had like a million views on it when he really rocked the boat. Why? And now, now he likes it. But yeah. why? Because they're going to judge you anyway. But the ones who get it are also going to be like, wow, right on. High five. That's a great job. Mm. And another client of mine right now, I've only got one one-to-one. -one. I, I don't take a lot. She's really big on Instagram. She's got like 100,000 followers. Um, she's pretty well known. And she doesn't want to rock the boat. And I said, your very next video, rock the boat. So we're going to see what's going to happen. Yeah. But I'm telling all of you, step out there and rock the boat. Because guess what? There's something you've heard me say in TCP. Everything always has been. It is now. 
and we'll always be fine. Mm, yeah, that's a nice one. Very right? Nice. Yeah. We get all wound up, but people are so self-absorbed in their own lives that you might get them wound up today. Tomorrow, they're going to have forgotten about it. They're on to something else to be wound up about. I posted something on Instagram the other day, like if aliens would look at our planet, what in the world would they think about us? We worry about so many ridiculous stuff. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. We worry about ridiculous, well, not we, me. Uh, and I've been there, so I'm not bet yeah. any better than anyone else. But most people worry about the most ridiculous stuff and they waste their energy yeah. because the battery's only got, I mean, the brain's like a battery. It's only got so much energy and they waste their energy. Yeah. So the way that I look at it, which you've heard me say in TCP, is how can I conserve my energy? Yeah. How can I conserve my energy so that when I need it for healing or coaching or whatever, I have the energy that I need uh, physically and energetically to create um, whatever it is that I want to create. Yeah, very nice. I've, I've got to go on yeah. the hour. We got, yeah. what, what else you got? I think we're, we're good. I just want to uh, want you to give the opportunity to the people how they can find. I think you have an amazing free course where people can enroll for. So yeah. I, could, could you tell okay. us a little bit something about that? Because I want people to, to go to that course and do it. Okay. Half, hopefully you've done it too. It's called yeah. the Master Thought Formula. Yeah, it's, it's great. I really loved it. It's, it really inspired me in a great way. Thank you. Okay, so it's a video course at my website, jimforton.com. I'm sure it'll be on your show notes. Yeah. Um, and it's called the Master Thought Formula. And the whole premise is, is that we're going to think all day long, so why not think from a master position? Mm -hmm. And that master position is that I am not my thoughts. I am the thinker of my thoughts. And being the thinker of my thoughts, I can manage my thoughts. Mm -hmm. What most people do, the example that I give, is you've you've heard this before, is I lost my job, I have no money, I lost my job, I have no money, I lost my job, I can't pay my rent, I'm gonna lose my, I can't pay my mortgage, I can't pay my credit card payment, I can't put my kid through school, and we stay in that energy. What almost no one ever does is say, wait, I lost my job, and I'm thinking bad thoughts, okay, I'm the thinker of my thoughts, what can I choose to think differently that's going to move me, as opposed to keeping me trapped, like the old place that I used to think from. Yeah. So that's why it's called master thought because the master thought of all thoughts is to recognize that you're the thinker of your thoughts. When you recognize that, that's kind of what I call disassociation. It mm. moves you away from the trap of that spiral that people, go, I've been there when I was young, yeah. that spiral of I don't have any money, I don't have any money, and just spirals and spirals yeah. and spirals because they're trapped in their, own, in their own thought. When you recognize that you're the one thinking the thought and you own that and work from that place, you get out of the spiral very quickly. Yeah. And the podcast, um, uh, transform your life from the inside out. It's, yeah. uh, you can go to, you can, you can Google or whatever. I think the we'll whole put it in show notes, of course, as well. Yeah. Yeah. It is transform your life from the inside out podcast, yeah. which we, we go, I mean, I cover a lot of this and much, much more in the podcast. And you give a lot of value also in the podcast. So thank so. you. Yeah. That was my intention. A lot of people just blabber away in a podcast. Yeah. And my intention was every episode has something that somebody can take away right now from this podcast and change their life. Yeah, yeah. So, and let me add there, guys, I'm just, I'm transparent. Part of it's marketing sure. Uh, because, you know, the more value I give you guys, the more that you see that I'm the real deal, the people want to go and, you know, hopefully want to go into my coaching program yeah. with me. But if not, guess what? You know what? Some people, they say, well, I can't afford your coaching yet. Take what you learn on the podcast because I give you real content. Yeah, to make money to go on a course. Exactly. Get, <laughs> what I want is get out of the, the, the fail points that you're in in your life. And also people have said, well, you give away so much, but you know what? The way that I live life is I need a Y N I. The more that I give, the more that I get. Yeah. And a lot of people are afraid. Well, if I give away too much, then I'm not going to have anything left to give. No, well, the way that I look at it, guess what? I give away. I just create more content. Yeah. And when I create more content, I create even better content. So mm -hmm. why this, this works for me. Why wouldn't I just build as many people as I can? Yeah. So, Thank you so much, Jim. It was very, yeah. very uh, valuable. I really like you. Yeah. Thank you. Hopefully we help some people over there. And, and sure I, want all, I want all of you guys to listen, even though you're in that culture, it doesn't mean you have to live by that culture. Oh, interesting. You know, somebody once said to me, being a hypnotist, which I don't do hypnotherapy, but somebody said to me, is it hard to get people into hypnosis? And I said, no, that's the easy part. <laughs> the hard part is getting people out of hypnosis. We're all and sleeping. Exactly. Exactly. The cultural hypnosis of we're German. So this is what we do, or we're Dutch and this is what we do, mm -hmm. or we're Christians and this is what we do, or we're Americans or 
all this stuff that people get into and they live by those little bitty boxes that they stay in and they live their entire lifetime not even knowing they're in a box. Yeah. So let me, let me give one metaphor here if I can, yeah. I'll wrap up. Yeah, sure. I think your audience will like this. I think I've mentioned this one time in TCP, but we're not from this planet. I mean, you come here, we're not here that long. Mm -hmm. Even if you're here a hundred years, that's a, that's a lightning flash. Like yeah. in the context of your life here, you're yeah. not here very long. So I tell people when we come here, it's like going on vacation. Yeah. So if you come to the United States, you're going to fly to LA to see James Wedmore in Laguna. You're going to fly there. You're going to rent a car and your rental. You're going to drive it around for a week and you're going to stay in a hotel. And then when it's time for you to go home, you're going to turn the rental back in and you're going to go home. Yeah. And the same thing with our life on this planet, your body's nothing more than a rental. Your yeah. life is nothing more than a rental. You come here, you drive around for however long you're on the planet. You, you go all your sightseeing and you wreck the car and you get the car fixed and all these things, but at the end of the day, you turn the car back in and you go home. Yeah, Our lives are as simple as that, but people make it so hard. Yeah. What people do is they get the rental car and they're like, oh my gosh, I hope I got the right rental. I hope nobody judges. This is kind of the wrong color yellow rental. I hope nobody <laughs> judges my rental car. And you know what? It doesn't matter. So to finish up here, the last sentence, which I just said a bit ago, everything always has been, it is now, and will always be fine. You live from that place, that will transform your life. Just living from that energy. Yeah, thank you, Sophie. Nice. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. I'm gonna leave you alone because you have plenty of things to do. So uh, I'll see you tomorrow at the coaching call. And um, I'll make sure everything is put in the show notes. Is there anything else you want? Okay. If you, yeah, anything else, the podcast and the training, I think. Eh? Yeah, podcast and the training. Those two things will change their lives. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank All right, you. big hug to you. Yes, okay. bye, Jim. Okay, bye-bye.